Hello and welcome to PM Personality Profile, except that I don't think it would be fair if I do a personality profile with this particular interview. So I say welcome to PM Express. But as far as media personalities go, I think I'm in a very, very fortunate and privileged position. Now, a few weeks ago, I had the opportunity to interview my wife. It was very strange, very awkward. Everybody would see me, you know, why was he interviewing his wife? Well, today I get the opportunity to interview my father. And again, I'm sure people will think, well, how does it seem for a media guy to go and interview his father? But yes, that's what I'm going to do, interview my father. Said that most of you may even know him better than I do, so there's no need me going through where were you born, your father was a priest and all that malaki. I mean, that's all, that's all out there already. However, my father is one person who was really dedicated a great portion of his life to inspire the youth to get hope, never to give up. That there definitely light at the end of the tunnel. He says that maybe his days were gone when he narrates a story about how to send a letter to you know, his parent. You go through about 16 different uh, actions just to get a letter to your father or information to your father. Whereas today's kid could do that in two seconds, send the same message to your father, pick me up from school. No post office, no stamps, no envelopes, nothing. And so I just want to sit down and ask you, you know, my father, that what next? So I want to call this interview the big what next. After all that's going on and all the happenings in the everyday, what next? Because as a people, we seem to be immune to anger. And until the people get angry, nothing seems to change. So I just come to my daddy's office to find out what next. My name is Nana Ansakwa, the fourth chief of the only republic within the republic, Akwamu Edumasa. And I'm here to talk to my dad, KSM. Yes, I'm sure many of you know, but for those who don't know, yes, KSM is my father. Stay tuned, I'm coming back. Well, thank you very much for staying, and this is the favorite part. This is the party line when we start, you know, talking to our guest, and obviously, uh, my guest is a is an easy one. It's a favorite. Uh, it's, it's a favorite. It's like talking to Father Father Christmas in December every time I see. So, Daddy KSM, uh, yeah, well, yeah, my just, son. First of all, I'm very proud of you, man. Thank you. I'm very, very, very proud of you, man. Touched. Uh, you have made me ohini. Uh, you have ohini here. Yes. Yeah, so made ohini papa. Ohini papa. I'm not small. <laughs> Oh, any papa. Oh, any papa. Uh, good so, to have you here, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Good to have you here, son. It's not man. But I want to find <clears throat> out, uh, you know, before I even go into my what next, you know, how have you managed to stay relevant for so long? Even though you said, oh, I've retired, I don't want to do any more, anymore, but any major event that happens, you know, they still want, you know, to tag along yeah. to... Yeah, so how have you managed to stay relevant? You know, I've been asked that question uh, quite a number of times and mm. I really can't pin down any one particular thing, mm. you know, except that I really, really, really care, I guess, naturally, mm. for the youth, mm -hmm. you know, and, and so my dedication and commitment to the youth and being concerned about the issues that involve them, I guess they are always current issues, so mm. my, voice, my face always end there somehow. Mm. So in a way that has helped, you know, um, and uh, regarding the show that I do too, I guess, I try as much as possible to always celebrate Ghana, you know, and I guess that's, that stays, you know, you never get to a point where you say, okay, now we, we've had it, let's start celebrating our nation, you know, <laughs> so I guess the, the, the focus of the show being celebration of Ghanaian ingenuity, mm -hmm. you know, and as bad as things may be, we, we, we love to see that some individuals are still in the midst of everything trying to, you know. So I would guess that that's why maybe, you know, it has helped with the keeping me relevant. The, the age gap. Yeah. So how, <laughs> how are you able to stay, I mean, well, how are you able to still attract the youth, yeah. you know, because uh, one of the world, in that case, you start hosting, you know, people of a certain age and talking classics and, you know, things. 
above the uh, the cyber taking but you know so how are you still relating or how are they relating to you mm. because they they are real hey, you know, they, they <laughs> yeah well like i checked this morning and i think i had 362,000 followers on twitter and i know these are all young guys you know sometimes i ask so what is it about me that fascinates them mm. and um i only think that is because i'm i don't judge you know, I don't judge them. I'll have the youth on the show, hip life, hip hop, whatever. I to, we all hang out just to see what talent they have, mm. you know, and I'm not about don't do this and do that and, you know, condemning. Mm. I think that's, that's a factor that I, mm. I, I never judge mm. in the field that they are very comfortable with me and they can tell me whatever because I won't judge them. If anything at mm -hmm. all, I can advise them, do it this way, mm. this way, you know, but I, I don't conclude that, oh, and I'm a phone, I'm a phone, I'm a phone, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just guessing, okay. you know, but I, I think it has a role to play, yeah. I guess it makes it easier to, you know, make, make it more approachable. Yeah. I guess it makes it more approachable. Yeah, yeah. But I, I'm here because of the big, you know, what next. Uh, you, you know, you turn on the radio, you know, there's a uh, health minister being stoned because yeah. he was going to, you know, commission a hospital that was built by, you know, a previous government, so he was being stoned. Uh, they go to Tamale and, you know, the uh, youth kicking, uh, you know, health mm. director out because he's just not happy with this particular health director. Banks falling, churches in the midst. And still, as a people, you know, we are okay with that. Yeah. And so if, if we are not angry, if we can't be angry, then, you know, I'm, I'm basically here to ask you, you know, what next? Um, I'm going to start with the, with the, with the quotation, uh, uh, an Nkrumah quotation, you mm. know. And uh, it goes something like this. Maybe I may go wrong somewhere mm -hmm. for the Dahan Nkrumah. Hey, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> but generally, it says something to this effect that in all political struggles, they come rare, mo they come rare moments. Hard to distinguish and yet fit out of the slip. And when all is set upon a hazard, out of a simple man is strength ordained. And to me, uh, it's talking about certain political opportunities that may come out, that may look like the worst things. But if one is able to concentrate and figure a way out to get out of that, strength is ordained. And I, I started with that because that's how it feels like now in Ghana, you know. Almost everything seems wrong. I remember the opening of uh, a tale of two cities, you know, and the, 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 the something to the effect that it was the summer of hope. And at the same time, it was the winter of this discontent, you know. It was an era of joy and happiness. And at the same time, it was an epoch of uh, hopelessness and sadness, you know, a tale of two cities. And that's what I see Ghana going through. You know, it's sort of like a tale of two cities. There's the worst and there's the best. And I think that presents a very rare opportunity that we can capitalize on and, and fix. Because you, you said something that was very, very key. You said, you know, what, what can we do? Nobody seems angry enough. And that's the thing, Nana. There's no sense of urgency in this country. Nothing is urgent. Hmm. Nothing, we don't have that sense of urgency. And that has trickled down to affect every single thing in our lives. You know, yeah. this whole thing about, oh, we're well, then to was here, you know. The good thing, unfortunately, there was a good, there's a good side about that. The good side about that is it also accounts for why we have been so peaceful in this country. Because <laughs> anything that could have agitated people to the point of confrontation in Ghana, we can joke about it and relax. Mm. But the bad thing, too, is that it has institutionalized wrongdoing yeah and and wrongdoing has become the new normal mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. corruption is is a way of life yeah so if you say you're going to fight corruption you are you have to be mindful that you're going to fight a way of life and that's difficult, difficult. you know so the good side of that is has kept us peaceful and, and you know but peaceful doesn't mean that somebody said the absence of war or the absence of chaos Peace will come with a sense of hope. You see, uh, once upon a time I was saying that uh, <clears throat> traditionally, 
every tribe, every community, every people, not tribe, mm. I mean, drop tribe and use community, every people have a history. And they always have something they swear by mm. never to befall them again. Everything. Kuyapimus will swear by Ukuada ni Sokode. Akwamus will swear by Akwamu Hine Yauda. That anytime anybody is being given an, a responsibility, as in the office, you swear, you know, take an oath and swear that, you know, whatever responsibility you're taking, you make sure that that event never have occurs mm -hmm. again. But, I, but when we come together as a people, we don't have the spirit of never again. Mm -hmm. So 3rd June comes and we get flooded. And then the following year, 4th June, yeah. we get flooded. Yeah. We, when we come together, we don't have the spirit of never again. But yeah. individually, we, we, we were born with the spirit yeah. of never again. Yeah. I, I don't know how frustrating that, that is for you. It's very, very frustrating because as individuals, we have pockets of excellence all over. Mm -hmm. You know, we have dynamic pockets of dynamism. But when we come together as a nation, it falls flat. And that is something I can't understand, you know. I've been trying to, to understand why. You take one Ghanaian from Ghana who doesn't give a hoot, gets to America, he gets up and it's all work on time. It is snowing, he walks in the snow backwards against the wind <laughs> to get to work on time. Bring him to Ghana, and still have to... <laughs> so small drizzle, he won't go to work. I back out to see it's raining. The same person. Mm -hmm in another land will work like a bull. So why? You know, why is it that as a, as a people, when it comes to doing something in our country or something collected to ourselves, we don't? And I think that whoever has that answer will probably be, be probably the best <laughs> leader we'll ever get in this world. I don't know whether people out there have it. They will just, ah, you know. I, I can't understand See, it. I guess, I guess the answer is that there are consequences there and there are no consequences here. But then, then the next question is that, why are there not consequences here? Mm, mm. You know, because maybe in the New York, if you don't come turn up and it's snow, well, you might as well stay home then. You lost your job. Yeah, yeah. Here, if it rains and you don't come, you still get the job. So mm. then the question then becomes, why Why, why don't we, if, if, if that's all it's going to take mm. for uh, effectiveness to come in, then maybe I throw it to you that, you know, why are we so afraid of, reprimanding or punishing or mm -hmm. applying consequences. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a terrible thing. I think that there was, there was a certain practice that we had. It was part of our tradition. Mm. It was part of our custom. And it was acceptable. Mm -hmm. For example, it's acceptable to, to respect somebody who is much older than you. It's acceptable to, 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 to sort of give um, um, recognition to people in society, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that's, that's us, that's our way of life, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. But we are now, we have now entered into another zone where the person who is older than you does not necessarily have to gain your respect unless he's doing certain things. So here we are, traditionally it's okay to, you know, to do something uh, 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 let, let me give you an example of this, you know, quick example. I, I, I remember I was stopped once by, in Ghana, please forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> I was stopped once, you know, at the traffic light, you know, and here the whole Ghana forgive me. I did run the red light. I, I, are there going to be consequences for this? <laughs> Only small. <laughs> uh, I did run the red light, you know, and, uh, forgive me. And, and then, so the policeman flagged me down and he was quite upset, you know, and I saw him charging, keep getting, getting, getting into the car. You know, roll that window, you know. So when the, 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 the window came down, so it's me, the anger disappeared. Oh, get us up! What? When the car you run the red light, the car I mean, excuse me. I run the red light, or I don't. I don't run the car crowd. Small. Small. But this is what I'm talking about, though. Hey, he, this is a respectable man. This is KSM, you know. Give him some respect. He's broken the law. Give him a ticket. I hope they don't come back and say, okay, now oh, we are bringing the ticket. We are bringing but, the ticket. But that's what I mean. Yeah. Traditionally, it's acceptable mm. to, to, to give reverence mm -hmm. to, you know what I'm saying. But when you look into how the world should function now, the world that we are in, the modernity, mm -hmm. does not accept so, that whoever it is who wants to cross it must face the law. Even if they are polite, they should give you the ticket politely. Exactly. Thank you.
be polite, but give me the ticket politely, like you, you're doing where you come from, you know, <laughs> excuse me, sir. And then they, they write you the ticket very politely. <laughs> but here they won't write the ticket. They'll beg you, you know, oh, sorry, 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 I stopped you, you see. So it's a part of the traditional thing. Traditionally, dear, he's just showing respect. But in today, according to law, dear, he is supporting somebody who's breaking the law. Mm. And that's a conflict that we find ourselves in mm. on many, many levels where under traditional terms would have been acceptable, mm -hmm. but under, under the modern modernity or whatever yes, word we want to use, it's, it's a crime. You see, the, the, then, then, you know, listening to you, those who are able to put pen to paper to change that mm -hmm. will normally be those who really, really are benefiting from that. Because the guy who can sign off to mm. say, look, arrest everybody, he should be a big man. Yeah. And so he's the one with the siren going left, right, and center, mm -hmm. and he's being saluted. So he won't come to his office and say, well, look, you know what, I'm going to deprive myself of this, <laughs> of this, pri of this privilege. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, how many, I mean, this is about the fourth or fifth time I've heard the IGP say, oh, no use of illegal sirens. Today I gave way to about two, you know. So until, we go back to until the people get angry, then yes. it's it. Yes, yes. A film was an uh, African-American writer. I'm not getting up, with, coming up with the name. I think it was James Baldwin, or is it Tony Morris? I don't remember one of them. He says, or she says, it is not enough to be sick and tired. You know, you can say it all the time. Oh, tell I'm sick and tired of this. I'm sick and tired of this. He said it's not enough just to be sick and tired. When you are sick and tired of something, you don't do anything. But when you get to the point where you are sick and tired of being sick and tired, you're ready to act. Mm. We haven't got there yet in Ghana. We are sick and tired of everything, but we have accepted it. We are just not sick and tired of being sick we and are tired. Not, <laughs> we are not tired yet of being sick, sick and, and tired. tired. We are just sick and tired. You know, when we get to the point where we are sick and tired of being sick and tired, you see, you know, and slowly it is coming. You hmm. know, slowly it is coming. And if I'm going to use this bank banking crisis for a while, and, you know, names that have come up, and Ghanaians are saying, well, let them face the law. Before I wouldn't have been, hey, Charlie, what are you know, you know, where we are going there, you know. Mm -hmm. Collectively, we all mm -hmm. decide that, no, 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 that's mm -hmm. no good there. But now, you, people are saying, no. You know, so you get that sense that people are, they're sick, we're getting sick and tired. Yes, I'm getting sick and tired. tired. It's coming, mm -hmm. you know. And it's better that the, the, the people in power, leaders, everybody, kn know this, mm -hmm. that don't let the people get to the point where they are sick and tired of being sick and tired, because things can get out of control then. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but it's coming. We seem to have an immunity. Of course, I mean, Togo's had it, mm -hmm. Burkina Faso, mm -hmm. Ivory Coast, sometimes two, three times all yeah. over. And yeah. we, we are in this pocket where yeah. nothing ever seems to get here. So the average Ghanaian knows that look, God must live here. We, we, <laughs> we are a special breed. And yeah. it, uh, see, I mean, from where we have gotten to, I mean, do you really think we can we can flip one day or we we are immune to flipping? Yeah. Well, it looks like we are, but eventually we will realize that we can't be. Hmm. You know? So for me, the, the, the time plays a very, very amazing role in this. Hmm. You know? And for those of us who understand that there are certain things about time that you have no idea, <clears throat> you have no way of rushing. You know? You can get very, very impatient about things. You want to, bam, bam, it should be done. You know? And it's not, <clears throat> you can't rush time. But eventually, time has its own way of rearranging things. You know, it's like this autocorrect machine on the, on the, <laughs> on the, on the, yeah. where when you type something, it will give you autocorrect. Yeah. Time will do its own autocorrect. Eventually. <laughs> you see, sometimes I, do a show and I say, look, if you're 40 and over, tune off, of course. Yeah. You, know, you, you are a failed generation, so yeah. 40 yeah. and below, yeah. hear me out. Yeah. And then some people come here and say, you'd be shocked at yeah. what the younger ones are doing. Yeah. You go to, the, they're doing SRC uh, campaign yeah. and there's money in there yeah. and the corruption has already started mm -hmm. in there. And then you're thinking, well, this was the generation I was hoping yes. to come and change yes. things. Yes. But in there, you know, still we have to find hope. And I, yeah. I think that the scariest thing I've ever heard was once upon a time we did a forum at uh, St. Royal. I think it was Odinho's 50th anniversary. 
And the guy walked up to me and said, Nana, do you know we are the generation to make the change? I panicked. Mm -hmm. I thought, really? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, he was so mm -hmm. serious. I mean, mm -hmm. what really was, oh, I've been listening to you and yeah. I've been meaning to talk yeah. to you. He said, do you know we are the generation to make, make the change? The change. Yeah. Like, I, I literally just walked away. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, no, 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 not mm -hmm. in our lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> you know, not in our lives. So yeah. here we are, the generation to make the change. We are even looking at the young ones who are probably, you know, learning worse things than we are doing. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. where's the change? Yeah. From? See, that, that's the difficulty. You know, I, I've always said this, that any responsible generation, your first duty is whatever legacy you inherit, you have to improve the legacy, hmm. build on the legacy, and leave it for the next generation to come and inherit. And there too, when they come and inherit an improved situation, also even further improve it for the other generation to come. And it goes on and on. So there's always development, there's growth, you know. But we have a problem where in, 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 in Ghana, we inherit a legacy. Not only do we not leave it as it is, so we damage it. <laughs> and leave the damaged legacy for the next generation to come and inherit. Mm. They too come inherit the already damage uh, and do more damage and the next one come so it's, it's a cycle of just re retrogression mm. you know now this is the sad part we're talking about the youth of ghana now you know the youth of ghana they've also inherited a damaged legacy so the sad thing is that in their mind that's all they know i remember when i went to uh, uh visit my brother i didn't go to university but i went to visit one of your brothers you know uh, in the university, one person, one room. You know, at the University of Ghana, they actually had tea breaks. <laughs> For the, the, they took tea breaks at 4 p.m., University of Ghana. I'm sure they were doing it at all universities. That's what I saw. So to me, that was the normal thing. You can take a tea break in university. That's what I saw. That's the legacy that I saw. Okay? So we came and we damaged it. So now it's not one man, one room. It's patching. And there's a whole chaotic thing and, you know. But my child who is in that situation now, that's what he or she sees. So to him, that's normal. It's probably inconceivable that, you know, you can have, uh, have a tea break. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm going to take a break and we're coming straight back. Don't go. <laughs> Thank you very much for staying. What can I say? Thank God it's Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God it's Friday. How many of you out there, you know, have a camera crew and you go to your father's office? You don't have a heart to heart about the nation. I am <laughs> so privileged and I'm so honored. And, uh, well, that. Recently, I've become an advocate of uh, population control. And I'm, you know, trying to get the message out there that the speed with which we are growing you know, no economy can manage it. I've made analysis, you know, that you take a, a, you know, a giant economy like South Korea, and they have like 350,000 to 400,000 new babies a year. Ghana is doing about 800,000 new babies a year with our meager economy. And so, it's not that the people coming in are good or bad or anything, but it's just that you, you won't be able to manage it. Recently, the uh, education minister made a powerful statement that he, he needs to build 622 schools just for the students of today to get everybody to sit. And even if he has the money, he can't build that fast to fill. 622,000? No, 622 schools. Okay. Yeah. Okay for the amount of mm -hmm. students mm -hmm. he mm -hmm. has out there. And that, even if you give him the money, money. today, mm. he won't be able to build the schools fast enough to put people in there. And so you are, I was hoping that certain key people in society would click that, mm, it's true, we are growing too fast and that you can't develop equally that fast mm. to absorb these people. <coughs> they need sanitation, they need health, they need education, they need roads to drive on, homes to sleep in. I mean, they need everything. But the message is not going across. And since you're a communicator, maybe I can ask you, how else can I put it out there for people to see that, listen, we are outgrowing our development. Yeah. This is where we are going up against a very, very <clears throat> strong, cultural, traditional obstacle here. Mm. You know? Mm -hmm. 
and, and the people who, who are having the babies, who don't even know how to take care of them, they are one consolation. <laughs> you know? And that's it. And, and I hope the person is not watching or anything, but I know somebody who they are, already they have seven kids. And uh, she's very, I mean, economically, she's, she's not doing well at all. Economically it's challenged. A, very, very challenged. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the word, you know. And I had she was having an eighth. And I'm trying her not to mention the name, but I said, oh, now why? Eight. Can you take care of them? Oh, it's like we're joking with it, but this is ingrained. It's very, very steeply ingrained with us, you know. And so it's so it's an uphill task. Sometimes I listen to you on radio and I say, "Oh, my son! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my son! <laughs> I, I feel your fire. Mm -hmm. I understand your passion. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I worry because I'm like, who is listening? And I don't know why it is that we are like that. You, you said something earlier that." Every June third of well, we expect some flooding and calamities, and we will expect it every. Why are we like that? That is a very, very difficult to answer. And my guess is because no, I don't want to talk about the guess thing. So we'll <laughs> <laughs> off camera I'll tell you why I think that. But it's something that it's you can't understand. Mm. We see it. It's coming, or it's like a ball of fire. It's coming right at us, and we are sitting, sitting there watching it, you know? So I don't know at what point we are going to get sick and tired of being sick and tired and start to understand that we are in deep trouble, you know? Mm. And my passion is the youth. Yeah. And I go, I've been to every university campus in this country, I've, in this country. I've been to every, every, almost everywhere. I talk to them. And the, the problems that they talk about and the things that they are going through, I just smell trouble, you know? Mm -hmm. Because number one, they have inherited a legacy that has made them, that has diminished their stature. It has turned them into substandard human beings. They are mediocre, but the mediocrity comes in naturally. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other time I was advising them that, look, be very, very careful. Because the standards that you have accepted are substandards, you know? Yeah. And when you, are, when you accept something as a substandard thing, as the way, whew, you don't know what harm you have done to yourself. Yeah. You know? So, uh, I, I mean, I listen to you, and number one, I'm happy that your generation, you know, there are people that are, that are taking over that crusade to enlighten the masses and the people, not the masses, <laughs> to, create, to create awareness. And many people are. Sometimes when you are talking, people are like, yeah, they can identify, when they call, they can identify <laughs> with you. And that's why it ends. You know, and then I ask you, get up. Let that want you to create some change, you know. But no, 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 no. <laughs> You know, my son, look, sometimes when I'm listening to you, I'm like, oh, this is sad. I remember talking about the same issues. Yes. That's 20 years ago. Yeah. So are you going to be talking about them now? And then 20 years later, your son will take over and talk about the same thing? So that was goes back to the question you pointed. You know, when when we get sick and tired, when when tired. we you know the, the spirit of never again. Yeah, when we get the spirit of never again. But the, what is working against us is the is that evil cycle of the legacy that we have allowed them to inherit. Hmm. So they don't know any better. You know, yeah. they don't know any better. They think that this is the normal thing. You know, imagine your kid growing up in these days and when you turn on the TV, you hear about uh, banks are collapsing, you turn on the, uh, the TV, you hear that uh, uh, NHS is going down. Everything is negative all around you. You just grow up understanding, oh, that's what it's supposed to be. That, oh, so what? What's the big deal? One thing that maybe I have to do a show on is, you know, anytime there's a scandal and there's money involved, the, the money is the mention the millions that are mentioned. Maybe many of us haven't gotten the opportunity to travel. 
But, I mean, there are big, big politicians who fell because somebody paid a $500 hotel bill. Uh, they got 3,000 holiday voucher. You know, and that's the end of their political mm -hmm. career. Mm -hmm. Here is $20 million, $80 million. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, the a staggering <laughs> amount of yeah. dollars. And I think maybe because we have, most of us haven't gotten the opportunity to compare how cor corruption is everywhere, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. see the, the, the amount uh, involved in other places, we think that's what the amount is yeah. with regards to yeah. corruption. I mean, these seven banks together is one billion pounds. Yeah. I mean, pounds. to rescue them is one billion pounds. pounds. I think mean, that's a budget of a small country. <laughs> you know? But we think, oh, hey, corruption, hey, hey, normal. Yeah. So I, I think that's also one thing that we really need to wake up to that. Yes, there's corruption everywhere, yeah. but the amounts involved yeah. Yeah. are not normal. Yeah, yeah. no, they, they are not normal. The amount involved is not normal. Yeah. yeah. But I can't come here and not look at uh, how we have allowed religion or Christianity to sort of get out of control and take its own form and become something else. And I was saying that if Jesus came today, you took him to a church, you probably wouldn't know yeah. what was happening there. Yeah. And you know, you probably have to swear to him that I swear to you, this is, <laughs> this, this is a church. <laughs> uh, I swear to you, this, this is a church. Yeah. I mean, are you concerned? Oh. Actually, I, I, I started a crusade like this long, long ago. Probably a little baby. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about this in the mid-90s, mm. that you guys, you should watch how the misapplication of religion is affecting your psyche. Mm. And please. And that was back then, you know. And it's only gotten worse since then. The, the, one of the most painful experiences I saw was one time, I went to Cape Coast, I was, I was giving a talk there or someplace, somebody told me that oh, they were having some church service before my symposia, or if I can accompany them to the church. So we went there and um, as part of the service, the pastor asked for uh, money donations, you know. But check this out, I saw, asked for money donations, and that's the simplest thing. He said that if you want to really benefit from the donation you are giving, you know, come and give the donation as if you are angry. Run! Run and bring the... Come and put your money in and come and see people. They, 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 they run! And I was sitting there, I'm like, my goodness. My goodness. What level of brainwashing? So I mean, I call those pastors weapons of mass destruction because they are followed by many people and they believe what they say. And so... That very power that they have with the people and the fact that they are not using their platform to really educate them is destroying them. So I call them weapons of mass destruction. Mm -hmm. Can you believe? You have a, a church service and today we are doing a, a service for those who are not employed. And so the place is full up all night. And then they tell them, rise up and claim your job. And they are jumping. University students claiming their job from heaven. Master, have you, do you have a CV? Do you know how it takes to sit down and construct an intelligent job interview to get a job? No. Why? Well, I'll go, and jump, I'll go, go for it and jump for it. Said, so these, these things worry me. Hmm. You know, and I've, I, I said it for, I think for about 10 years, that was like, uh, 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 what do you call that thing? Obsession. Hmm. But I stopped. You know why? No. I was imagining... A scene, you know, I'm walking on a bridge, you know, and I see the river below, and I see that there are many people in the river who are drowning. So I say, oh, Charlie, look at them drowning. So I go for a rope, and I throw a lifeline, and they're in the river, and they do this to me. <laughs> I'm so sorry, you know, not because they're moving me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yes! I thought you guys were being misled. I thought that the way you are practicing your Christianity is wrong. I was trying to open your eyes to understand that, listen, God is not so wicked. You are my son. Mm. Yeah. If you need something, when you're a baby, when you need something, so I say, uh, Daddy, um, I, I, I need this. Mm. Okay, before you get it, don't eat for 30 days. <laughs> you know, and, and do this and punitive things so that God will listen. 
I'm saying, yeah, fine. If you want to stab, uh, fast for some spiritual reasons, fine. But don't think that that's a condition to pressure God. Well, that's my policy. Mm. That's what I believe. You know. So I just try to get people to start understanding that you don't serve a wicked God. You don't have to put yourself through such punitive measures for God to listen. Mm. And he calls himself your father. What kind of father is that? You know? So as I said, you know, when it got to the point where I realized that uh, I was trying to throw them a lifeline, but they, feel, they felt that, go to hell. We know what we want. I said, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. That's why I've kept quiet till today. Maybe, I'm, maybe, maybe there's something they know I don't know. If I'm right, one day they'll get to that point and they realize, wow. So all this time, I was being cheated. All this time, I didn't, have, I didn't need to have brought my new bought vehicle to the pastor to drive for one week to bless the car. And, and, <laughs> and a whole host of things. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I got to a point. I said, "Okay, hey, Charlie, if if they say do it to them, and you know you you are crazy enough to create that market for them to fleece you, and you are enjoying it, who am I? Have you wondered why you know like the Scandinavian countries, like the Japan's, yeah. uh, you know, there are countries who are have even more atheists than that. Yeah, yeah, and." They seem to have a more Christ-like yeah. life, yeah. Yeah. and as I always say, that yeah. they they are the first to any humanitarian yeah. issue. Yes. They are the first to arrive mm -hmm. to, to to help. Mm -hmm. And so, if you flip back to the coin and us jumping to get our jobs and not acting like that, what could be missing? Well, what is missing is that I like how you said they seem to be aces, but they have Christ-like lives. You know, for me, and I speak for Christianity because I was born and baptized a Christian. <laughs> for me, I think what Jesus Christ was teaching was a way of life, period. In other words, in my books, mm -hmm. you can be a Muslim and have a good way of life. And you're cool. You can be a Buddhist. It's all about a way of life. And that's it for me, mm -hmm. you know. So when you go abroad, you have people whose way of life are... Uh, 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 upright, you know, they won't cheat you. I mean, some will cheat you mm. here and there, but they will, they won't normally, you know, they have an upright way of life and everything. And that's why they are successful, you know? And I remember somebody saying something very, very interesting because somebody was quoting, uh, somebody was talking about how places like China and India and places that are quote unquote non-Christian, they were having some good developments in their midst, the person says, oh, eh, but that's how the devil is. You make sure that they, they even they succeed so that you see that, uh, come on. <laughs> so that you, 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 it's all the work of, I mean. To stop that, them from is that, converting. Is that, is that where we are? Is that our level of thinking? And want to compete in this global world? Are we serious? Should, should there be a regulation? Can, can there be a regulation and what format would it be? Well, I know that uh, uh, my guy in Rwanda banned 6,000 churches. And he says, if you want to be a lawyer, you go to law school. If you want to be a, a doctor, you go to medical school. If you want to be an architect, you go and study architecture. If you want to be a pastor, go and study some intelligent theology. Anybody can pick up the Bible, stand by the roadside and make noise and disturb the whole world and say he has a calling. Who are you to go and argue? What's he your friend? <laughs> and you see the backlash I'm going to get from this. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't bother me, cry. Yeah. Anybody yeah. can say they have a calling. And that's the problem we have now. Misleading people. Telling them to jump for a job. In this difficult economy. 2018. 2018. You want to go and jump for a job? Masa, let's be reasonable. Mm. Let's use our common sense. Even the Jesus Christ that they claim that they are following, Jesus says something. I'm sure, I'm sorry, I don't remember the exact uh, quotation in, in Luke. He says, he, he said, which of you intending to build a tower will not sit down first and count the cost? These are not my words. Nick and Nick. Jesus. Which of you intending to build a tower won't sit down first and count the cost? Think. Think! 
How long do you want the tower? What paint are you going to use? What's the structure? What's the fun? Think. And Jesus says, if you are not able to count the cost, you will not be able to complete your building. And men will mock you saying, this man started to build, but he was unable to finish. And you might be kind. So use this common sense and understand that if you want a job, there's a structure, a strategy. But is that not the irony that then if, if you're thinking and you're questioning faith, then it means you don't have faith. <laughs> that's, that's our misunderstanding, you know. That's our misunderstanding. I call it blind faith. There's faith that can kill you and there's faith that can heal you. The faith that kills you is the blind faith, you know, that something that is, is not, you know, but that's what faith is supposed to do, you know. Don't question it, just believe it. Mm. But you can't live by just believing, you know. You can have, you can have hope and believe and work, you know. And I'm telling people the difference between faith and hope is this. Hope, let's say I have a, a, a I don't know, a grandson or something who is not doing well in school, you know. And then all of a sudden I've noticed that they've started paying more attention with their schoolwork. They are doing more reading. They are doing these studies. Their grades are going up. I have hope. Why? Because I can list the things I have seen them do. Facts. Oh, yes, see, oh, yes, see, oh, yes, see. Because of these reasons, I have hope. You know? Faith doesn't operate like that. The boy is not doing well in school, but he's not making any attempt to do well. He doesn't care. He's being wayward. But still, you have faith that one day things will change. On that note, I'm going to take a quick break <laughs> and have faith that I will definitely come back. back. <laughs> Told you, have faith, I'm definitely <laughs> going to come back. Have hope and faith, come back. Well, thank you very much for staying. Uh, this is a father and son affair. It's a PM Express, don't get it confused. You're still too to join, join news. Yes, don't get, don't get confused. You're, you're still here. Well, I guess I can come here and not talk about the art industry. Mm. You know, once upon a time to be a... Uh, uh, a comic, you know, you have to have a lot of buffoonery, mm. you know, put a grinding yeah. stone on your, on, your, on your, as a bow tie and, uh, you know. Wear a clock wear as your wristwatch. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, just out, very outrageous and really get the people to laugh whether they like it or not. And then you come in with a one-man plays and, you know, and importantly making us laugh about the things that we do wrong so, even while you're laughing, you're thinking that, yeah. oh, yeah. it's true, it's funny, but we do these things. Yeah. Yeah. And after you, a few young ones have come, who I see are yeah. following the trend, yeah. you know? Uh, is it going the right direction for you? I think, I think definitely is, mm. you know, because um, I think if there's one bragging rights I will, I will have <laughs> is the fact that, you know, um, most of the, 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 the comics that we see now are university mm. graduates, yeah. you know? And most of them will tell you, well, when KSM came and he did it, we realized it was possible, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's my small bragging rights there. That mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's changed. You know, you're talking about, there are different kinds of comedy, you yeah. know. We have the slapstick. The slapstick is the physical one. Mm -hmm. Oh, tapoli for a bow tie, mm -hmm. and then the wall call for a watch, watch, and then, you know, physical things. Mm -hmm. that, that alone can make you laugh, mm -hmm. you know. So that's the kind of comedy, that's slapstick. And, but that's all we're used to for the most time mm, yeah. during the concert era. It was a slapstick. You mm. had to be physical, you know. Mm -hmm. And then I came in, and when I started, I, I, I moved away from the slapstick to, I don't know whether you're going to call it intellectual humor, mm -hmm. you know, based on true things that happen that you can relate to and, 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 and agree with, but laugh. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the, my favorite routines I've done all time is when I was talking about... Uh, Ghana and our our time consciousness yeah. and I remember comparing it to being abroad and coming to Ghana <laughs> when you want to make an appointment my brother says oh can we do what at 10 o'clock 10 boom it's on you want to do it in Ghana I say oh uh, shall we say 3 3 10, 10, 4? you know and people just cracked up why because they all do it <laughs> so they could identify with it you know so I just chose that path you know that's just to stimulate people's thinking mm -hmm. and question them you know so the slapstick is a kind of comedy, okay. and um, what the guys are doing now is more of the, you know, routine stand-up, mm. you know. Yeah, to the extent that there's been some improvement, yes, mm -hmm. because now 
I can talk about maybe six, seven names who are doing stand-up. You know, before mm -hmm. then you couldn't. No. For a long time it would be uh, Fritz and Tommy and Alforsen for a long time, mm -hmm. you know. And then I came in and then for a long time it was just me alone for a long time. And now you can't even count them, you know, DKB, Dobie, Lexi, James Brown. Uh, There's even a doctor in there. Yeah, Obi. Obi is a doctor, <laughs> an obstetrician. Yeah. He's complete, you know. And there he is, you know. James Brown worked for me as an editor. He's a film editor. Mm. You know, mm. so that's 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 something that I, li I, I like. You mm. know, the people have a passion to create humor, and they've decided to to stick with it. And so big up to all of them. So there has been an improvement. Mm. You know, and, uh, uh, lots of them have come through your through your ring, though. And one of the good ones is uh, oh the. Wobajeke, the guy who did Wobajeke. Oh, yeah. Uh, I love him. Chief. Chief Moment. Abdul. Chief Moment. Moment. Yes, yes, Chief yes, Moment. Yes, yes, Chief yes, yes. Moment. Yeah. So yes. you've, uh, you've, you've trained a few good ones, you know? Yeah. Well, well Moment was working with me for a while. He mm -hmm. was, uh, at one point, he was a production manager for TGI. Okay. When the KSN show was called TGI. Mm -hmm. He was my production manager, you know. And so um, the first time. I don't remember how I discovered him, but I featured him on, he, became, he was a guest on TJ even before he came to start okay. working with me, you know. And then the poetry just blew everything mm. up, you know. So... Um, but for the records, I'm also a sapphire trained. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I almost forgot. <laughs> you see, for the, for, for the records, I'm also very, yeah. very much sapphire trained. Yeah, yeah, uh. yeah. That's great, that's great. <laughs> I've had a few. Abeku Santana. Look at yeah, that. Yeah, because that was all, one of my, my small, small boys. So Is he now? Big, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then mm. this goes on and on and on. This guy called Chami, he's working on Radio Gold now, Chami Badrim. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. one of my, my young guys. So, yeah, Foresight TV, um, Ignis. Okay. Yeah, Ignis, you know. So, mm. there, there, there's, there's been some influence, mm. you know, out there. And, um, you know, look a few Ninkeba Brage there. <laughs> so, so I learned I learned radio here, and I learned TV here, yeah, in Safa. Yeah, I learned radio in Safa, yeah. and I learned TV. Yeah. I learned TV too in Safa. And your mighty talk show host, man. <laughs> man, sometimes when I listen to you, I have to make sure. I, is it me? Is it me or that? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a good student. Yeah, we are brilliant well, students. Uh, <laughs> brilliant student. <laughs> Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. <laughs> but uh, so, what, what, before we end, we've talked about hope and faith. What can we hope for? I mean, what is our hope? What is our hope <coughs> collectively as a people? Yeah. There should be one or two things that we see this child doing that we hope that the results are going to get better. Yeah, yeah. We have to keep doing what we're doing. You know, I mean, I'm laughing at you, and I say, yeah, but. What we're doing, I do 20 years ago, but you'll be surprised what you're changing. Trust me. You know, you'll be surprised. You know, people come to me these days and tell me, oh, they're listening to something I did on uh, Moving On Up about CV writing, and they are thinking, so what? So you'll be surprised. You never know. You know, mm -hmm. at one point I started, started to questioning, so all these things I'm doing, right? I mean, you know, but you'll be surprised. And that's the way we have to go. You never know who you're reaching. Mm. And because you don't know who you're reaching, is are it? You, are you giving me hope or? <laughs> I'm giving you hope. <laughs> <laughs> are you giving me hope? I'm giving you hope because so that you can have faith. <laughs> you know, that's how, my, that's how my faith works. My faith works because I have hope. I have hope. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not empty faith. <laughs> no, not empty uh, faith. My faith works because mm. I have hope, you know. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and I, and I hear talk about you and, you know, I'm like so proud, you mm. know. So, that's, that's the thing. You never know. You know, I mean, some mighty, mighty people that, you know, um, Richard Sky. Yeah. Yeah, he was telling me, oh, I used to listen to you, you know, carrying on, Bernard Avril. Oh, I used to listen to you. I'm like, really? You know, so you never know. So just, just keep the focus because you know what you're doing is right. Stand by it. And regardless, even when it, it appears that nobody is listening, you don't know who's listening. So keep that hope and let that hope give you faith. <laughs> I need, I needed that. <laughs> I, 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 defi I definitely needed that. Uh, I, I love education, and I'm sure you're also an uh, you know, education enthusiast. I mean, collectively, aren't we politicizing education and making it too 
dangerous and what are we meaningful. not criticizing? <laughs> <laughs> what are we not politicizing? Mm. It is sad. It is really, really, mm. really sad that up to now in Ghana, it's very difficult to make a statement that will not be giving a political angle. Mm. It discourages people, you know. There are some people who might want to say something, but they don't want to be, be saying and say, ah, it's because you're saying it because you're NDC or because you're MPP. Mm. No, I'm saying because I'm a nationalist. Mm. I love Ghana. And I'm saying it because Ghana stands to benefit. And if what I'm saying happens to be uh, an, an MPP thing, so be it. If it happens to be NDC, so be it. But the focus is that it's, it's a national, you know. So I'm hoping that we'll get more and more nationalist getting into getting into politics and not partisan politicians you know we need we need we need that change you know cuz education is so key we are messing it up with politics it's amazing mm. it's amazing i'll just give you a uh, you know a little hope for the youth out there so i think that's your camera so a little hope for the youth before i check out of your office <laughs> <laughs> well what can i say keep hope alive man hope when hope dies Everything dies with it. Trust me. No matter how bad it looks, no matter how disappointing, there's a there's a saying in Chi. Yes, in English it just means that it takes just small thing to change the tide of events. So just hang in, you know, and you don't know when that tide will hit you. Don't give up. Well, Keep well, well. Hope alive. <laughs> what can I say? Proud presenter. Father and son, beautiful Friday. By this time, you sat back and uh, relaxed. And I hope that in this conversation, your hope has built up. Because <laughs> I just got a little bit of hope to carry on doing what I'm doing. So I'm sure within this conversation, there's something that makes you carry on uh, to do what you do. But we need a critical mass of mm -hmm. nationalists. Mm -hmm. Let's build it all up. Folks, until I come to you, you know, next Friday with another guest, have a wonderful, wonderful uh, weekend, but the repeat will be on Sunday, 2 p.m. Sunday, 2 p.m. Normally, the repeat is after news file on Saturday, but the repeat will be on Sunday, 2 p.m. Stay tuned and thank you very much for watching. Thank you, Bobs. You're welcome, son. <laughs> <laughs>